Have you ever heard of the Konami Code? To put it simply, it's a cheat code included in Konami games, and was first used in the Famicom version of Gradius, which was released in 1986. Various Konami games including Gradius, Contra, Tokimeki Memorial, Metal Gear Solid, and Silent Hill applied cheats or easter eggs using this code. And as it became more popular, Konami code was used by other popular games developed by other companies, such as Assassin's Creed and League of Legends. Also on Overwatch, when you enter the Konami code on the official website, it shows cute Hanzo characters and also there are many fun other easter eggs in the game. First, let's talk about easter eggs in the trailer. From the brothers that appeared in the first cinematic trailer, the older brother Brian is wearing clothes with a StarCraft Raiders Raiders sign, and the younger brother Timmy is wearing a plaster cast that has the Warcraft's Murloc. In the brief scene with the guard, you can find Hearthstone's mug cup and play screen and Murloc's foot. And in the animated short Recall, you can learn Winston has been playing Warcraft 2 since he was a child. Next, as for easter eggs you can find during play, if playing with multiple Soldier 76s run by AI, the game will start to name them Soldier 77, Soldier 78, and so on. Also, all of the heroes have their unique footsteps, except Zenyatta who floats around. Lastly, let's take a close look at the maps that have the largest number of easter eggs in Overwatch. In the arcade in Hanamura, there are many arcade games that are parodies of Blizzard games. The arcade in Hanamura includes a game called Fighters of the Storm, which is a reference to the Blizzard title Heroes of the Storm. Fighters of the Storm 1 features battle between Tychus and Tyrael, and Garrosh and Kerrigan in Fighters of the Storm 2. The Lost Vikings 6 is a parody of the Lost Vikings series. You can play this game in the Hyperion Cantina in the Wings of Liberty campaign. Super Siege Mode 3 is a side-scrolling shooter similar to Metal Slug, designed in a StarCraft theme. Another game in the arcade, Soulstone is a parody of Diablo 3 and Dungeons & Dragons. When you leave the arcade, there is a massive Murloc display advertising a ramen noodle shop. If you fire at the Murloc, you can hear its signature gurgling noise. Also in Temple of Anubis, you can see Murloc graffiti painting on the outside of the vehicle. If you fire at its eyes, it makes gurgling noise as well. When expecting the hieroglyphics in Anubis, you can find the Horde symbol from World of Warcraft, and a Zerg Hydralisk skull is mounted on the wall of the vehicle, in which attackers spawn at the beginning of the match. In the restaurant in Route 66, you'll find a comic titled Craft from the Stars, a play on StarCraft. And on the soda fountain, there is a Zerg StarCraft symbol, also, in the restaurant, there is a poster of Diabolox hot sauce on the wall, a clear reference to Diablo. And below that, you can find a check signed by Decker Kane from Diablo. In Dorado, there are cute pinatas shaped like Diablo. And there is a trailer on Hollywood with the name Tyrael written on the side. The Walk of Fame stars outside the attacker spawn area in Hollywood display the names of three characters from the Lost Vikings. In different parts on the map, you can sometimes see tablets displaying Hearthstone on the screen, which can also be found in other maps than Hollywood. Inside the spawn area in Hollywood, you can see a movie poster reads Some Like It Bot, and it's a twist on the movie Some Like It Hot with Marilyn Monroe. Hero of My Storm, starring Hannah Song, is, of course, a parody of Heroes of the Storm. The aligned symbol from World of Warcraft can be found in a number of locations in Hollywood. And the Goldshire Studio logo, which is written on the Central Passage, references a town named Goldshire of Elwyn Forest from World of Warcraft. The lockers in Watchpoint Gibraltar display the last names of some of the Blizzard game developers. And the flight info board, located at the attacker spawn area in Numbani, shows various branches of Activision Blizzard and cities of the Overwatch maps. Lastly, in Volskaya Industries, you can sometimes watch the cool dance performed by one of the Svatagor mechs that protect the region.
Overwatch employs a different storytelling method that is distinct from other games, and discloses the story little by little through animation or short cartoons rather than a single campaign. Some of the stories are continued through maps, and reveal various stories not only about the purpose of missions, like freight transport or base occupation, but also about the surroundings. Watchpoint Gibraltar is where Winston used to stay after Overwatch was shut down. Through the various objects of the attack team, you realize that the game starts from the point of the animated short, Recall. Determined to rebuild Overwatch, Winston decides to launch the satellite drone, XR-9, to the space in order to recall the agents. The goal of the Gibraltar mission is to transport the drone to the rocket, but the teaser video, We Are Overwatch, suggests the rocket was successfully launched. Lijiang Tower houses the aerospace company Luchang Interstellar that built the Horizon Lunar Colony where Winston used to live, but the exact mission setting has not been disclosed yet. Route 66 was a base for the gang Deadlock, where McCree was a member when he was an outlaw. The main mission is to escort the nuclear bomb, which was obtained after attacking the train, to the Deadlock space, or stopping the opposing team from doing it. Again, the exact information has not been released yet. So we don't know which group is trying to relocate the bomb for which purpose. However, the truck or the container with Lu Cheng Interstellar's logo in the deadlock space may give you some hints. The Anubis Shrine is played by attack and defense teams trying to find out the secret of the Temple of Anubis. It is believed that this secret is related to the facility and breaking open the god program Anubis that used to be protected by Helix security where Farah used to work. Russia was the first country to be invaded during the first Omni Crisis. It defended itself by producing large, human-piloted mechs named Sviatogor. The name Volskaya comes from Katya Volskaya, the CEO of Volskaya Industry, and her house is featured in front of the attacker spawn area. Since the game starts after the second Omni Crisis, Katya Volskaya has already decided to expand the robot production and the attacking and defending teams fight each other to take control of the production facility and robots. From the animated short Dragons, you learn that Hanamura is the main place for the story of Shimada Brothers. For that reason, at Shimada Castle, where the defense begins, there are traces of the battle between Hanzo and Genji, and items that symbolize Hanzo, Genji, and Shimada. However, it is still unknown exactly why the heroes are fighting to occupy this place. King's Row is where the animated short Alive took place, and compared to Alive, Although it's not the exact location where Takartha Mundata was killed, but there is a statue of Mundata that was placed after the event. In the animation, Takartha Mundata gives a speech about harmony between humans and Omnics on the King's Row, and the mission on this map also depicts conflict between humans and Omnics. Underworld, which is the destination of the cargo, is inhabited by Omnics, and there are graffitis on the walls surrounding Underworld that show animosity of humans against Omnics. In the mission, the cargo carried by the attacking team is EMP, which they should take to Underworld and blow it up to kill the Omnics. When the anti-Omnic sentiment begins to spread in Hollywood, a famous director finds himself in trouble. He's an Omnic named Halford Glitchbot, who is on the black car that should be taken to the trailer at the destination. When you go near this black car, you can often hear his lines, and will realize that he hired the heroes himself, and that he has a nasty personality. The Nepal map is divided into three stages, village, shrine, and sanctum. The last of which is where Takartha Mandata and Zenyatta used to train, and in the village, there's a room where Genji and Zenyatta used to stay together. Again, although the exact setting has not been revealed yet, it is likely that Talon, which succeeded in killing Takartha Mandata, will occupy this place as well, while Genji and Zenyatta, who consider Nepal their home, try to stop them, making their battle surrounding Nepal inevitable. As for Ilios, there's no hero particularly related to Greece, nor is there any EMP, bomb, or even an Omnic. However, you can hear a story about this place near the cockpit of the aircraft at the starting point. Lastly, Dorado is supposed to hold Festival de la Luz to celebrate the end of the Omnic Crisis, and the buildings on the map include electricity company called Lumerico, Dorado Bank, and Ordinary Houses. First, apart from the mission, you can see that Dorado Bank has been already robbed by Junkrat and Roadhog. And on the corner of the map, 
you can find the house of a girl who appeared in the animated short, Hero. Back to the main point, we still don't know about the cargo in the Dorado mission, but you can find some very important hints about this mission in Hero. The destination of this cargo is the Ziggurat building of Lumerico. Now the question is, what company Lumerico is, and why Overwatch agents are either interrupting or helping them? And the answer lies in the hint found in Hero. The animation suggests a gang named Los Muertos is based in Dorado, and the truck they ride is the same model as the transportation truck in the Dorado mission. And more importantly, the number plate proves that this truck belongs to the gang. Then it means there is a close relationship between Lumerico Energy Company, which is linked with the cargo and Los Muertos, which is linked with the truck. So despite what it seems like on the outside, Lumerico is hiding something. And Soldier 76 even says this. I want to know what Lumerico's been up to. Athena, an AI that appeared in the animated short Recall, is likely to be released as a hero after some development. According to the US game web scene, PC Games ends interview with the Overwatch senior designer Michael Chu, Blizzard wants to turn Athena into a character and planted some clues in Recall. Unseen Overwatch agents who were mentioned in the Overwatch cinematic trailer are In that one battle they had Soundquake and Some says the Soundquake might be this or this character for having chest missiles which was mentioned by Timmy but still can't be sure since there's no other current information about this character Tentatively named Hunter X there were no related trailers that hint about her release but she's likely to be newly added in the game well, before we talk about this character, first you need to know that D.Va, who receives all our affection, was also first revealed in the Hanamura Arcade poster before she was released. There are no less than 7 posters about Hunter X in the same arcade. They are both female, and it seems like the character concept has been somewhat developed, with the accompanying robot, a scene that seems to indicate her skill, and unique goggles. She may form rivalry with D.Va. Also among the characters that were shown in the trailer, and therefore might become new heroes, this character appeared in the anime short Recall. Also this character appeared in Recall as well, and a similar character was found in posters on the map. Lastly, based on the news released on May 30, 2016, the character named Liao was also first introduced as a founding member of Overwatch, and will possibly be released as a new hero in the future. 